Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, you're going to learn some useful grammar structures for your academic task one essay. Grammatical range and accuracy counts for 25% of your overall mark, and these will help you to improve your score. For task one essays, you're required to describe the detail in a chart, graph, table, map, or diagram most especially to record changes in data. This will involve describing trends, describing increases and decreases, and making comparisons. To do this, you'll need to use particular sentence structures, and these are one of the things we'll learn about in this lesson. We'll also be looking at task one verb tenses and other elements of grammar that frequently cause problems for students. Here's an overview of the lesson. First we'll look at the verb tenses, then the key sentence structures, and finally the two common grammatical errors. The choice of which tense to use will be determined by whether or not the graphic contains dates, and if it does, whether the dates are in the past or the future. Follow these guidelines. If there's no date, use the present tense. If the dates are in the past, use the past tense. If the dates are in the future, use the future tense. The tenses you're most likely to need are for the present tense, the present simple, the present perfect, or the present perfect continuous. For the past tense, it'll be especially the past simple. And for the future tense, future simple or future perfect. This table gives explanations of these verb tenses and example sentences from Task 1 essays. Pause the video and read through it. Most graphics require you to compare data from two or more time periods, for example past and present, or present and future predictions. So you'll need to use a range of different tenses in your essay as appropriate. The key word in this sentence is appropriate. Whilst you'll gain marks for using a good range of tenses in your essay, you should never do so just to show how many different tenses you know. Only use the tense that's 100% correct for expressing a specific piece of information. It is accuracy that the examiner is looking for. The first two steps to writing a great academic task one essay are to analyse the question and identify the key features. I cover these tasks in detail in a separate lesson. You'll find a link to it in the notes below this video. Once you've completed these two steps, you'll understand what you're required to write about. It'll be one or more of these things. Describe trends, describe increases and decreases, or make comparisons. There are specific sentence structures that you can use for each of these, and that's what we're going to look at next. The two most useful grammatical structures for describing trends are one, noun phrase plus verb plus adverb. For example, the number of employed women fell significantly. Two, there plus be plus adjective plus in plus noun phrase. For example, there was a dramatic improvement in the percentage of people in employment. The two most useful grammatical structures for describing increases and decreases are 1. Noun phrase plus verb plus adverb. For example, the popularity of social media climbed steadily. And 2. There plus be plus noun plus in plus noun phrase. For example, there was a fluctuation in university applications or there is now a swimming pool in the location of the old factory. Here's some useful vocabulary for making comparisons. More, most, high, higher or highest, large, larger and largest, less, least, few, fewer and fewest, low, lower and lowest, and small, smaller and smallest. These words can be used to form many different sentence structures useful for task one essays. You can see five examples on the next two slides. The first sentence structure uses more, fewer or less, 
with a noun plus than. For example, more teenagers play computer games than a sport. Second, we have most or least plus an adjective. For example, the most common childhood illness in 1979 was chickenpox. Next, more or less with an adjective and the than. For example, cruises were more popular than beach holidays in 2012. Fourth, we have high, low or few with er, that is higher, lower or fewer, plus than. For example, a lower number of teenagers play a sport than play computer games. And finally, we have high, low, large or small with est, that is highest, lowest, largest, smallest. For example, the largest proportion of immigrants came from Mexico. These sentence structures are valuable tools for getting high marks in your academic task one essay, so practice using them. For many students, two aspects of grammar that are a particular problem are prepositions and articles. There are two specific prepositions that you'll probably use numerous times in your task one essay when writing about change. They are in and of, and they're easy to get wrong. Follow this general rule. When stating the specific value of the change, as a number, an amount, a percentage, etc., use of. And when stating what has changed, use in. For example, an increase of 20%, an increase in the number of over 60s taking exercise classes, a drop of almost a half, a drop in house prices, an improvement of 45 units per week, an improvement in retail sales from April to June. Of is also used after a value. You probably want to use proportional values in your task one essay. So here are some examples. A small percentage of, just under a quarter of, exactly a half of, roughly three quarters of, a significant majority of, and a high number of. Another preposition to learn is between, which you'll need to make comparisons. For example, the price of houses went into sharp decline between 1980 and 1985, but increased significantly from 1986 to 1990. Now we move on to articles. Many languages don't have articles, and the native speakers of these languages can find it a huge challenge to remember to use them. In English, there are three articles, the, a, and an. Each is used in specific instances. Use the or the before singular and plural nouns when the noun is a specific thing. For example, the bar graph illustrates how many male and female students were studying full-time and part-time in Britain during the years 1970-71, 1980-81, and 1990-91. Use a or an before a singular noun or noun phrase when the noun is non-specific and could be any one of a group or type. Use a before a noun or noun phrase beginning with a consonant and use an before a noun or noun phrase beginning with a vowel. For example, Less than 30% of the population took a foreign holiday between 1970 and 1985. There was an upward trend in families taking an annual holiday abroad after 1990. Also use a or an before an adjective singular noun combination, such as these from our preposition list. A small percentage of, an insignificant minority of, a high number of. The key to improving your grammar is to know your weaknesses and focus on these as you practice and when you check your work in the exam. I hope you found this lesson helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.